I'm not sure that this season could have been any more of a mess for the Milwaukee Bucks. All of that talent, all of that adversity that you had to battle all season, and all of that promise just to lose to the six-seeded Indiana Pacers of all teams in the first round. The guys who you were literally beefing with during the regular season. For those of you who've forgotten, there were multiple instances this year where these two teams will butt heads. There was that whole in-season tournament debacle. During this one, Halliburton would let Dame know exactly what time it was after drilling a deep three. After this, Dame would say that he couldn't be mad but warned Halliburton that he needs to stay humble. There was that whole debacle where Giannis was mad at the Pacers for allegedly sneaking off with the game ball after his 64 point performance. I couldn't even blame Giannis for this one. If I had thought that somebody snuck off with my 64 point game ball, I would probably be pretty mad too. So after that 64 point performance, tensions were high. This led to Malik Beasley thinking that it would be a good idea to say that he knows that these two teams are going to play in the playoffs and when they do, it's not going to be pretty for the Pacers. It's safe to say that things didn't go exactly how Beasley or the Bucks would have planned with the Bucks falling to the Pacers in six games, which of course is not going over too well with the Bucks stars, Damian Lillard, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Guys, we have to talk about what's going on in Milwaukee, but first, Today's content is brought to you guys by Underdog Fantasy, the guys who are making playing fantasy easier than ever. If you copied my Joel Embiid and Josh Hart entry exactly from my last video and you watched the game, then you would have gotten to see the 76ers get eliminated in dramatic fashion while winning 60 bucks in the process, which really isn't too bad if you ask me. That's probably not too sweet if you're a Sixers fan, but at least you would have gotten $60 in the process. My fault guys, I've just been having a ton of fun playing Underdog Fantasy Fantasy's pick'em game and watching these NBA playoffs and you could too. All you have to do is go to underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. When you sign up, you'll want to make sure to use my code COOP because when you do, you'll get your first deposit doubled for up to $100. Thank you Underdog for coming through and sponsoring today's content. Middleton. Allen has it. Down the lane. He got out of time. The Bucks don't get the shot. It is so quiet you can hear a number one seed drop. Yes, you can. When the Milwaukee Bucks fired Coach Bud after an early playoff exit last year, the last thing that this team wanted to be was on the outside looking in yet again. But yet, here we are. So losing in the first round happens, and as Giannis has said before, just because you get bounced in the first round, that doesn't make that season a failure. Do you view this season as a failure? God. Uh, you asked me the same question last year, Eric. Okay, uh, do you get do you get a promotion every year on your job? No, right. So every year you work is a failure. Yes or no? No. Every every year you work, you work towards something, towards a goal, right? With, which is to get a promotion, to be able to uh, take care of your family, to be able I don't know, um, provide the house for them or take care of your parents. You work towards a goal. It's not a failure. It's steps to success. Michael Jordan played 15 years, won six championship. The other nine years was a failure. That's what you're telling me. No, I'm asking you a question. Yes or no? Now, while losing in the first round happens, losing in the first gets a heck of a lot harder to justify when it happens in back-to-back -back years and you're competing for a championship regardless of how valid that your reason for losing is. You guys might hate me for this one, but in this situation, I just don't feel like letting the Bucks off of the hook is the right thing to do. The Bucks fired their head coach Adrian Griffin, who was 30 and 13, only to go ahead and hire Doc Rivers, who ended up losing more games than he won for them. That isn't even hyperbole. Under Doc, the Bucks would go 17 and 19 from January 29th, which is when Doc was hired, to the end of the season. During this stretch, the Bucks would only have a better record than nine other teams. This team had Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yet, there was a stretch of basketball where they only had a better record than nine other teams. Guys, that's horrific. There's no other way around it. It's no wonder that this team got first rounded. Now, some people might look to injuries as the reason that this team fell apart in the playoffs. And while a healthy team definitely would have been a great help to this team, this team didn't even want to help themselves. For those of you who are confused, 
Let me explain. Late in the season, the Bucks had Giannis trying to battle through a hamstring injury that was clearly bothering him. This injury was bothering Giannis so bad leading up to the calf strain that would ultimately sideline him for the playoffs that there were multiple instances where you could see him moving awkwardly and grabbing his leg out of pain while he was on the basketball floor. As we all know, I'm no doctor, but when your franchise player is showing signs of injury and being unable to go, you need to take that very seriously and protect the player from themselves if you have to. How many times do we have to see something like this happen before a lesson is learned? Remember what happened to KD when he returned too early from a calf strain? He would end up tearing his Achilles, which let me tell you, is not fun. I tore my Achilles a few years ago and now I think it's a miracle whenever I finish a basketball game without any pain or injury. Now at least in Kevin Durant's case, this man was risking it all for a championship just being games away from one, not games away from the regular season ending like Giannis. So even Doc would state that there were multiple times where he would want to take Giannis off of the basketball floor late in the season because he could tell that this man was running on fumes. Regardless of the trainer saying that Giannis was good to go and Giannis drive to play, as I said in my last Bucks video, that man shouldn't have been on that floor so late in the season unless he was 100% good to go. When Giannis season ended with that calf strain, so did the Bucks. Now I know what you're thinking, Coop. But if the Bucks made it out of the first round, then there was a chance that Giannis could have returned for the next round. Well, according to Giannis himself, he wasn't even close to returning to the basketball floor. To quote him, I did all of the tests like the protocols you have to follow to check the boxes and I wasn't even close. So for better or for worse, this postseason was going to hinge on what Damian Lillard and the rest of this Buck squad could do. For Damian Lillard, this had to feel like deja vu. Ironically, Damian Lillard was the same one who said that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. He said this referencing Russell Westbrook who left OKC, but now he's living it in Milwaukee. Now, I don't want to act like Dame had absolutely no help in this series because I thought that Chris Middleton was phenomenal. He averaged 24.7 points, 9.2 rebounds, and 4.7 assists for the series, shooting 48.2% from the field and 35.5% from three. If there's somebody that's not going to get any blame for the way that this series went, it's Chris Middleton. I mean, seriously, this man could only do so much. Game three, he repeatedly left me speechless. Hands off to Chris Middleton, inside five seconds left for Clay. Chris uh -huh. Isaac, Bucks trail by three. Damian Lillard to Chris Middleton from up top, once again, close glass. Game three, he would drop 42 points in a losing effort after hitting big shot after big shot. If anybody outside of Dame needed more help in Milwaukee, it was for sure Chris Middleton who just wouldn't stop battling. To be fair to Brooke Lopez, I also thought that he showed that he still has something left in the tank at 36, which is impressive. As for Dame, this series he would average 31.3 points, five assists, and 3.3 rebounds, while shooting 42% from the field, and a scorching hot 41.7% from three. With no Giannis, we knew that Dame would eat which sort of has been the case all season. This season, Dame would average 24.3 points, 7 assists, and 4.4 rebounds, while shooting 42.4% from the field and 35.4% from three. At the very least, with the gravity that Giannis demands, you figure that that three-point percentage for Dame would be a little higher. When Giannis hasn't played this season, Dame's PPG would jump from 24.3 to 29.9. This season, the Bucks have failed to maximize Dame when Giannis has played, which is a serious issue in itself, because if this team wants to win another chip, it needs these two to complement each other at the highest level. After the trade went down, Giannis would say that him and Dame were going to be on the same page, that he wants Dame to be the primary guard, and he wants Dame to be Dame. But for the most part this season, the Bucks have felt like the Giannis show. I think that there is a world that exists where Giannis, Dame, and this Bucks team goes ballistic, but I'm not exactly sure that Doc Rivers is going to be the one to engineer that. Which brings me to say this, this team losing in the first round with major injuries to its stars was terrible for this team for so many different reasons. For one, it not only gives Doc a pass, but it also gives a pass to this front office for what was a terrible year. I can already hear some people saying that, well, if you finish third in the East and that's a terrible year, then you're doing something right. 
to that i would say sure but this year the bucks had a terrible process and when your process is mud what you're going to end up with in the end is dirt. For two, you exit the postseason with no footage of Giannis and Dame on the floor together. It's obvious that this team needs more two-way threats, as does every team, but sometimes seeing something fail can be the difference for a team and seeing what changes need to be made. This team is going to have its work cut out for itself going forward. It needs to start developing its young players or look to acquire more bench depth in any way possible. And no, I'm not suggesting that this team trade five second rounders again for a player like Jake Crowder. I'm talking about finding guys that you will feel comfortable playing when playoff time comes around. Bucks fans, it hurt me so much for you guys watching Obi Toppin and TJ McConnell combine for 41 points in game six when the Bucks leading bench scorer could only put three points on the board. Now for the Bucks, if going down in the first round wasn't bad enough, Patrick Beverly would have to do so being as insufferable as possible. First, this man threw a basketball at a fan accidentally hitting a woman, and then he proceeds to tell a woman that she can't interview him post game, all because she isn't subscribed to his podcast. Here. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. You subscribe to my pod? Do I subscribe to you? I do not. So I'm, I, you can't interview me then? Okay, no disrespect. Ja Jamal is here. You, you, so. you subscribe? Okay, cool. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Patrick Beverly would later apologize to this reporter, but it was still a weird thing to do in the first place. This kind of outlines a now hilarious part of the game. Players doing outlandish things just for the sake of impressions and podcast promotion. I can already see that years from now, kids are going to be saying that Braun played against podcasters. Like I said, it was an ugly finish to the season for the Bucks, but the good news is that this team does have Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo, who both seem dedicated to figuring this whole process out in Milwaukee, regardless of Stephen A. Smith saying that they should trade Damian Lillard, all because he said that he was having trouble adjusting to life in Milwaukee. Guys, in the comments below, let me know what your next move would be if you were the Milwaukee Bucks. Are you keeping the Damian Lillard, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Chris Middleton trio together? Are you trading one of them? Are you firing Doc Rivers after you just hired him? Again, let me know what you would do down in the comments below. Clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel. I'm Get Like Coop, bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload.